He's an award-winning TV host and highly decorated military veteran. That's right. Montel Williams spent 17 years as a fixture in American homes, five days a week. The Montel Williams show filmed more than, get this, 3,300 episodes with some 36,000 guests tackling a variety of social issues. I mean, we're talking finding lost loves, reuniting families, spirituality, and medical conditions as well. He went on to launch an online wellness community, a multiple sclerosis foundation, after he was diagnosed with MS and continues his work with veterans. And Montel is now the host of Military Makeover, a lifetime television show that repays those who have served our country. And we are so we are honored to have so you. We are so excited that you're here. I'm so honored to be the host of the show now. You just don't know. It's crazy. You know, I want to start right off the bat. A lot of people really don't know a lot about your military career. Tell us that. And I take it for granted that most people did know, right. but they don't. And you're absolutely right. I, I literally in, uh, I enlisted in the Marine Corps right after I graduated from high school. And so at age 17, I, I got into the lay program, so I ended up walking into boot camp right after I turned 18. Um, and within three months, I was meritoriously promoted two times as an enlisted Marine. And they said, you gotta go to Naval Academy. And so, because I had been out of school so long, I had to go to Naval Academy prep school. So I ended up prep school with 40 other Marines, and I was one of those 40. Mm. Only 12 of us graduated from the prep school. Wow. Only 10 of us got appointments to the academy, and only four of us ended up graduating from the Naval Academy, which me being one, one I had the four. distinction. One of four. The, the distinction of being the only African American to go through the Naval Academy prep school as an enlisted Marine and then be commissioned as a Naval officer. And I got commissioned, I got commissioned as a special duty intelligence officer, and unbeknownst to me, <laughs> it was really because of MS that that happened. Really? really? Yeah, I got diagnosed. I, I really went through this just like hell and back about 12 weeks before graduation after we had our pre commissioning immunizations. I got so sick, I was put in the hospital for about three weeks. I almost didn't even get commissioned. Wow. And it was really misdiagnosed completely because it was really the first onset of MS. And I was very young, and no one thought a young African American male could even have the disease. Exactly. And so I got misdiagnosed for then the next 20 years. But I want to talk too about the Montel Williams show. It must have been so great for 17 years to have a forum to like bring issues to the forefront that you cared about. Absolutely. And you know, I think when people look back, they try to take a joking look at, at talk shows in the 90s. But there were several things that we did that literally changed our society. If you remember, had Oprah Winfrey never spoken to Ryan White, we'd have never had the conversation about HIV and AIDS that we Absolutely. had in America. Had talk shows never talked about the fact that there were people being abducted, thrown in trunks, there would not be release latches inside of trunks right. of cars. It happened because of talk shows. There were several things that we did and talked about and we were able to, to, to shine a light on that the society didn't want to shine lights on back then. And you made such a difference with that show. And now I'm going to fast forward, if you don't mind, to sure. you know our our family show, which is the military makeover. Absolutely. It's such a perfect fit for you because I read somewhere that you said, and I'm quoting here, Montel, I never took the uniform off. Well, you know, when I was uh, doing the talk show, during that entire period of time, I'm one of the only people in this country that spent and took four trips to the Middle East before it was vogue to do so. I flew out there and visited troops on aircraft carriers on ships. I've been involved in the last three years of getting two Marines who were imprisoned overseas by foreign governments. I helped to get them released from prison. And I'm currently working on another one right now. So this is what, I, I will never take this uniform off. Oh, I love it. Well, I want to talk about something a lot of people don't know, that you recently had a huge health scare. Tell us about the stroke. I was in a gym in a hotel that I've been in many times, and I was, no one else was in the gym. And I was exercising, really overdoing it. And I stood up and I heard a noise. And I looked behind me and I went, there's nobody here. Mm. And when I came back around the front, the entire room kaleidoscoped. And I said to myself, don't tell me you just had a blanking stroke. Yeah. Because I heard this loud pop and I felt something in the back of my head. My head started getting hot. My side of my face started getting hot. I wanted to sit down and I remembered that the worst thing you can do if you have a stroke is to lay down. Because mm. you lay down, you're going to die. Absolutely. So I'm like, I'm not laying down and dying in this gym by myself. So I ended up wall walking through the hotel oh about 50 yards to get to a hotel, got up got to an elevator, got up to my room. My wife was in the room and this was early in the morning. She was in the room taking a shower. I, pushed the key and it came out and I said, TT, call an emergency vehicle right now and tell them your husband just had a stroke. The EMT showed up to the room. They had me down in front of the hotel in the street and did a CAT scan on me in the street. Oh and within gosh. 20 seconds, there's a doctor up in the top of this CAT scan, up in the, the, in the television screen. And he says, Mr. Williams, you know, you are really right. You are having a stroke right now. And let me just say it. Had they treated me like they would have for a normal stroke, they would have killed me right there in the oh street. 
because most people have what's called an ischemic stroke. I was having something, it's a very rare stroke, it's a, it's a cerebellar hemorrhagic stroke. So if they had given me those drugs that would have would have helped to thin my blood, I would have bled out right there in the street. Oh my god. They gosh. took me right to the hospital. I spent 21 days in the hospital, seven of which were in ICU. ICU. And barely able to move for the first six or seven days. And I'm so blessed now, seven months later, this stroke normally, this type of stroke normally kills 50% of the people who have it when they have it. And it normally takes up to a year to two years for people to regain some of their faculties from this kind of a stroke. And I'm literally back at working now in less than six months. Which leads me to believe that you definitely still have a purpose. Oh, no question. You are I'm one not of done. here. You're going nowhere. I'm we not are done. so happy that you're recovered. And, you know, we could talk to you all day. I mean, but we are so excited that you are with us on this mission to help veterans. Let me tell you what was so crazy about this. I was laying in the ICU when they gave me the contract for the show. Oh, oh my gosh, my you've gosh. got to be kidding so me. So I signed the contract for military makeover in ICU, which told me oh. I'm not going anywhere. No, you're not. I'm no, here you're to do not. this. You're here to you're stay absolutely. for a purpose. Absolutely, no question. Absolutely. The show was on before I became the new host. And I will tell you, the, the team has done a phenomenal job. I just think that I can bring a different perspective to the interviews with the families. Like the family that we're going to meet on this next episode is the Middleton family, who's a family that's been through hell and back. Guy serves his entire career. A, he's about to get out. He has a very young child that goes through about six or seven months of really acute medical issues. And then they're at home and his five-year-old daughter who just had a birthday goes to a amusement park, comes home and dies from septus mm -hmm. two days after they go. And you know, the guy's trying to transition out of the military and work in a civilian world, but he's gone through a crisis that I don't know if a lot of people could actually survive the way they have. And this family's together, they're thriving, they're doing really well. And we owe them not a handout, right. we owe them a hand up. Absolutely. Because they're gonna pay this forward, guaranteed. I'm so glad you care about veterans. Uh, many have, many feel forgotten, and you're not gonna forget them. We're not gonna forget them. And no. you're gonna take care of them, and, and, you, and we want you to take care of yourself because we need oh, you. Oh you. yes, take we care need of you. yourself, your thank health, you. and we are blessed to have you as host of Military Makeover. Oh, it was you. so amazing having you here, wasn't I know. it? It was fantastic. Thank you so much. We'll see you thank soon. You. Yes. God bless you for all you've done. And by the way, Military Makeover, check it out. Check out the website, militarymakeover.tv for more information. Or our website, thebalancingact.com. You could be still.